Well, guys, it is the final episode of the season. Here to talk about it is Pete Davidson. <laughs> Colin and Che and millions of people only watching to see if I bring up Kanye. Yeah, Pete, you've, you've had a weird year. Yeah, a little bit. Oh. Yeah, I just, uh, I never imagined this would be my life, you know? I mean, look at me when I started here. Like, back then, I was just like a skinny kid and no one knew what race I was. <laughs> and like now everyone knows I'm white because I became hugely successful while barely showing up to work. <laughs> and like, look at me now, I'm aging like an old banana. And Colin still looks like the only Kennedy who doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Thanks. So, so are you officially leaving? Yeah, man. Lauren accidentally gifted me a sock, so I'm free. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, has, has, a lot has a lot changed since you started here? A lot has changed. In three years, uh, Fox News went from calling me a monster uh, for making fun of Congressman Dan Crenshaw's eye patch, to also making fun of Dan Crenshaw's eye patch. <laughs> Tucker Carlson called him Eye Patch McCain. That's two veterans in one insult. Jeez, Colin, your dad's a dick. Uh, actually, actually, Pete, I, I'm not related to Tucker Carlson. Well, I learn something new every day. <laughs> but in fairness, though, uh, to what I originally said, because clearly it still bothers me, uh, I, what I was saying, I was simply making a joke about someone's appearance without realizing that the medical condition behind it was a sensitive issue, which is an SNL alumni tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Here, on one hand, I don't like that people think they could just run up on stage and hit a comedian, but on the other, it's how I know all my shows will now be sold out. <laughs> Pete, is there, is there anything you're gonna miss about this place? Oh yeah, Lauren for sure, he's amazing. He's led us through the COVID era, even though the only time he wears a mask is at his eyes wide shut parties. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Sure, yeah. they got there. He, uh, he always gives the best advice, really. This is all true advice that Lauren's given me. Um, I'll never forget this. Uh, I called him and said, uh, when I got engaged, I said, Lauren, I just got engaged to Ariana Grande after dating for two weeks. And he said, oh, hold on for dear life. <laughs> It's a true thing he said. <laughs> and then I remember when I auditioned for SNL, he looked me right in the eye and said, I don't know, if, uh, I don't think you're right for this show. So let's screw this up together. <laughs> and that's exactly what we did. And that's why people who don't think I deserve this job shouldn't hate me since we have so much in common. <laughs> like if anything, I should inspire hope, you know, like that literally anyone could be on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Seriously, you see a guy bumming cigarettes outside of 7-Eleven at 2 a.m.? That's not some meth head. That's the next Pete Davidson. Well, I I'm gonna miss you, Pete. Oh, well, thanks, Colin, even though I know it says that on your cue card. <laughs> <laughs> You've been like an older brother to me in that, uh, you know, in the way that my mom openly loves you more than she does me. <laughs> and I appreciate SNL always having my back and allowing me to work on myself and grow. And, you know, thank you to Lauren for never giving up on me or, you know, judging me, even when, like, everyone else was, and for believing in me and allowing me to have a place that, like, I could call home with the memories that'll last uh, a lifetime. So thank you, guys. Pete Davidson, everyone. <laughs> the weekend update on Tom Joseph.